You see my shirt? I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Welcome to episode two of Megan Monday. Yesterday, I filmed everything that I ate and drank so that you could see what a full day of eating looks like for me on this journey. If you saw my first video, then you'll know that I am incrementally increasing my calories each week as part of what's known as a reverse diet. So I am adding energy in a slow and steady way so as to hopefully not gain body fat. So I was up to 1900 calories this week, but I was a little inconsistent about logging it. So I wanna do it one more week before I go up again. But here's what I wanted to tell you. The way that I will know when to go up or when to back off in calories has to do with a couple of different data points. I told you in my first video, if you saw episode one, that I weighed 155.4 pounds this time last week. Today, this morning, I weighed 154.0 pounds. Did I lose 1.8 pounds of fat in one week by adding calories? Is that possible? The answer is no, it is not. Losing 1.8 pounds of fat in one week would be something that is really only possible for somebody that is much newer in their fitness journey or has much more fat to lose. So the discussion I wanted to have with you is that there are multiple different data points that you wanna take, including body weight on the scale, measurements, so getting a soft seamstress tape is a very cheap and very wise investment because it's a much more comprehensive signal of what's going on in your body. So my measurements have remained exactly the same week over week, but the scale was up and down. So I was 155.4 and then a couple days after that, I went up to 155.8 and I was 0.8 for two days. And then the last three days in a row, I have been 154.0. I did not lose 1.8 pounds of fat in three days. Like that is not possible. Number one, it needs to be part of an ecosystem of data points that we are taking before we change our course of action. So it cannot be the only thing that we focus on. And number two, we have to understand that natural fluctuations are going to occur. There is no such thing as linear progress when it comes to fat loss or muscle gains for that matter. You're going to go like this and hopefully the line is like headed in the right direction over time of what you're trying to do. But there's gonna be all these little dips along the way that are gonna freak you out if you let it. That's why it's so important that we remove emotion from these data points. It is just information. So if I weighed 154.0 this morning and I'm like all excited because I think I lost weight and then tomorrow I weigh 156, what am I gonna do? Go eat a bunch of cupcakes? It cannot affect your behavior. The plan is the plan is the plan is the plan and we stick to the plan. Getting body weight is just data points that helps us figure out what to do over a long course of time, not day to day. So if my body weight were going up for a period of over a week, I'm gonna say even two weeks, that is how long it would take before I changed my course of action. Because there are so many reasons why your body weight would fluctuate. It has everything to do with where you are at in your cycle. It has everything to do with how much water you have had, how, what kind of foods you've been eating and how much sodium was in them, how much carbohydrate you've had, how much sleep you've had. Like there are any number of reasons why your body weight will fluctuate from day to day. We have to remove the feelings from it and the idea that if it's up, it's bad, and if it's down, it's good. It is not that simple. Scale weight is one measurement, body measurements. A third one is gonna be pictures. I know, I know, I know, a lot of you just really do not wanna see yourself in that way. You don't have to show them to anybody, but it's really important that you face what your body looks like and you learn to appreciate it and be grateful for it just exactly the way that it is right now. And picture, you will be so sorry in the future when there is some transformation going on that you do not have something from the beginning to look back on and compare it to because that difference is going to astound you and you are going to want to celebrate it. Take pictures if you are trying to change your body. I implore you. The fourth one is how you look and feel. How do your clothes feel? Like, is does the waistband feel better? Does the Are the sleeves getting any tighter or looser? You know what your clothes feel like on your body. You know how you move through space. You know what your thighs feel like when you sit 
Indian style on the couch. Pay attention. Pay attention to that. If you feel better, that matters. It's subjective, sure, you can't measure how you feel, but it matters, it's a data point. If your measurements are staying the same, or going down, of course, but even if they're staying the same or not going up by that much, again, we're gonna take them over time. If your body weight is over a period of two weeks, not going up, like consistently going up, and if your pictures are showing that you're either staying the same or looking a little leaner in a couple of areas or there's less like shadowing where the cellulite bumps used to be, like all of those matter. So we take a multiplicity of data points and we don't just take them one time, we track them over time before we make a move. Otherwise, you stick to the plan. So I am adding calories. I'm gonna do one more week at 1900 because I was inconsistent in plugging it into my app this week and tracking it. And then if everything is holding steady, I'm gonna go up to 2000. 2000 calories a day the following week. Remember my goal is to get up to 2200 at least because that is what I have calculated is my total daily energy expenditure. So that's where I believe my maintenance calories are that I have never eaten that much food in my life. And I'm trying to get there. So one more week at 1900 calories and then we'll see how the measurements and all the data points are doing and then I'll probably jump up to 2000 calories for next week. So I just wanted to have a little fireside chat with you about removing emotion from the scale, taking multiple data points and taking them over time, not letting snapshots derail your course of action because the plan is the plan is the plan is the plan. Capiche? Well, I had time to make breakfast for three people, but not four. So I grabbed one pumpkin waffle that I'm eating without butter. Not because butter is bad for me, <clears throat> but because I'm trying to save my fat macros for meals later in the day where I can use butter to actually cook with it, eat all my egg yolks, all the things. Protein shake with collagen in the car and I'm off to coach my 9.30 CrossFit class. I'll catch up with you when we get done. All right, so I'm starving. I'm gonna make a real lunch, but for now, I'm gonna eat the eggs that my kids didn't eat for their breakfast this morning. I weighed it, and I'm just going to find an entry in my fitness pal for cooked scrambled eggs, and um, I will log probably like a half a teaspoon of butter that this was cooked in. We're gonna forget about the spinach, so I'll log 75 grams of cooked scrambled eggs, and then this was um, like 25 grams of an apple and then my other a waffle that I never got to eat before CrossFit. So that's how I'm gonna log this that I'll eat since I'm starving and then I'll make a real lunch. <laughs> Okay, so it's like two o'clock now. I just got off a strategy call with my business coach. It's a good thing I ate the rest of my kids' scrambled eggs and that waffle 
a while ago because I haven't eaten since then. I am going to throw together some leftover chicken, leftover cabbage and tomatoes from dinner last night, and then saute up some shredded carrots, put that over some mixed greens and a little bit of leftover um, white rice. So I'm gonna put together my lunch bowl now. Okay, so I'm gonna eat this with a little bit of spicy kimchi on top. There's a lot of my rice chicken veggie mixture left in the skillet over there. So after I eat all this with the greens, I'll go back and put the rest of that skillet that I measured out in my bowl and then top it with this. Trader Joe's spicy cashew butter dressing. It's one of the few like store-bought dressings that you can find that doesn't have canola oil or soybean oil in the ingredients and I'll finish up that skillet and we'll be done with lunch finally at 2.18 p.m. Lord have mercy. We have a garage jam so I'm not gonna get to wad with the class today but I'm gonna do my own version at home. I'm gonna do it single style so um, the reps would be cut in half and actual, actually they originally had it programmed as snatches instead of wall balls. I'm actually gonna do 15 of everything um, and just see how fast I can go because I'm training for conditioning right now. So I'm gonna do three rounds of 15 snatches with a 55 pound barbell, 15 box jump overs, and then 15 kipping pull-ups. And then instead of a run around the building like they did in class, I'll do um, a 15 calorie row. Here we go. This is where we're having dinner. We brought a picnic, well, Eric brought a picnic. I was working out and showering. But how beautiful is this? That is the St. Pete Pier. It's a brand new pier. They just finished construction a few months ago. <laughs> that is Albert Witted Airport. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with my face. And this is full of wine. We'll see how much I get through it. I'll measure the container when I get home to see how much I actually ended up drinking. That's how macros works. Like you do your best when you're at home and then you live your life and you estimate. Best efforts. Bye. <laughs> Sweet Eric went to Publix and just got, he wanted a bucket of chicken. So he got a bucket of fried chicken, some coleslaw. We already had this guacamole at home and then this was another container of guacamole that he rinsed out and just added our own salsa that we already had out of the fridge to that guy. And then found a local Florida brand of tortilla chips. How cute. And then filled up little bottles of uh, juice for the kids and uh, wine for the grown-ups. One of our rules is that if we're having cocktails or alcohol, we let them have something fun to drink too. We try to limit their sugar, especially liquid sugar but we also try to limit ours. So we feel like if we are indulging, we should let them too. So they have juice and we have wine. So I'm just gonna do my best to measure this. The serving size on this says that one ounce is nine chips. So I've already had nine chips in salsa. I'm probably gonna have another nine. So two servings of that guy, two. 
Um, normally I teach um, in my programs about the types of fats mattering and fried chicken from the grocery store and coleslaw made with mayonnaise from the grocery store and chips um, are usually fried um, all using um, oils that are pretty inflammatory. So these, these are not normal foods for us, but it's also not something that we're going to be dogmatic about because we don't go on diets at my house. We just do the best we can when we can. And tonight it's a picnic and enjoy yourself kind of night. So that's what we're doing. Okay. So I'm trying to finish up my macros from that picnic. I'm estimating everything. I had five grapes. So I took five grapes out of the leftovers that we had and I weighed them and it came out to about 1.25 ounces. So I logged 1.25 ounces of grapes. Let's figure out what is left in this bottle. That right there, friends, is a seven ounce pour. I'm about to go fill this guy up with water and see how much it holds. So Eric says he filled it up to about here with wine. The bottle itself weighs about 12 ounces. When I weighed this full of water, it came to approximately 31 ounces. 31 ounces minus the 12 of the bottle is 19 ounces. There's seven in that glass. So that means I've already had 12? Gosh, that adds up fast. I think I'm still gonna drink that seven because we're about to watch a movie. I'm just gonna log it. It's Friday night, I'm okay with it. Okay, so it's 9.22. Gonna finish my seven ounces of wine. That's a wrap on today. Um, I'm gonna show you all of my macros. Now, if you'll notice, I'm under protein, under carbs, and under fat. So you would think that I would be under calories because all of those things have calories associated with them. But there was 400, a whopping, 433 calories in the 19 ounces of wine that I chose to drink tonight. Um, I'm still working on it. I was shooting for 1900 calories today and I ended at 1977 with a crap ton of wine. <laughs> so I feel like that's a pretty that's a pretty successful day. I don't drink very often, certainly not during the week and not even every weekend. So on a day that I chose to indulge in that and I still hit my calorie goal within a window of 77 calories and was pretty close to my protein goal. That's my second in priority is that I hit protein. I was 13 grams under. I like to be like within five grams of whatever my goal is. So it was pretty close. So overall, I had a really fun day um, and I feel like I navigated all the various different challenges, logged what I did eat, and uh, we're gonna put that in the win category. So Hubby and I are about to watch an episode of Away on Netflix with, uh, what's it? Hillary Swank. Swank. Hillary Swank. It's really good. I will see you next week on Megan Monday. Thank you for watching. Good night.